Okay, we're continuing our sermon series on uh, the, the uh, book of Matthew, and the title of this week's message is The End of the World, Part 2. Part 2. Uh, last week's, uh, we, uh, by God's grace, we studied Matthew chapter 24, verses 1 through 14. I mentioned that in Matthew 24, Matthew 24 uh, is often referred to as the Olivet Discourse uh, because the Lord Jesus delivered this, uh, this teaching on the Mount of Olives. And so the, the chapter begins with the disciples asking the Lord, um, what are the signs of your returning? You know, how can we know when you're going to return? And the Lord said several things. First of all, there will be deception. There will be the, the Antichrist who comes, who tries to get you to think that he is the Lord Jesus. There will be wars. There will be famines. There will be pestilences, he said. There will be earthquakes. Then there will be tribulation or persecution of believers. And remember we said that tribulation is when someone is persecuted for what they believe, right? And we went through many verses, you know, every time in the New Testament the word tribulation um, is mentioned. We went through all that, and what was that all about? Believers being persecuted for their faith. And, uh, and then we, we talked about the fact that uh, there's, so there's this great tribulation period. Uh, and, then, um, and then there's God's wrath okay, that, that is poured out. And, um, um, but what we talked about as well is that before God pours out his wrath, uh, after the tribulation, we're going to talk more about this, uh, we will be spared of God's wrath by, because we're believers, by being lifted out of here. Okay? So, um, so we talked about that. And then, uh, but we also talked about the problem with um, those who teach falsely. Uh, those who teach that, um, that the, the tribulation period is seven years. And that, um, and that people are lifted, believers are lifted off the earth at the beginning of that seven year period they teach incorrectly and uh, and what they're doing is calling the entire thing tribulation you know the, the entire uh, period and they're confusing tribulation with God's wrath um, and um, and ultimately their approach to eschatology or end times um, doctrine is a big mess it's a huge mess that's not supported by the, the Bible. Uh, as a matter of fact, um, when I posted the, the sermon on YouTube, um, um, a couple days later I started getting reaction by people. Someone wrote, uh, this is not biblical teaching. I said, well, first of all, did you watch the sermon? Uh, no response. Uh, uh, so, uh, because I put in the, the title, you know, or in the description that we teach that, you know, uh, the Lord comes after the tribulation. So that's what he was responding. This is a biblical teaching. Uh, then he put, uh, because in John 14, he says that he's preparing, the Lord says he's preparing a place for us and then he'll return to get us. Does it say in John 14 when he's returning? No. It doesn't mention the timeline at all in John 14. Then he goes on to cite what many people cite, and that is uh, in uh, 1 Thessalonians about the uh, being lifted in the air. But does it tell you when that's going to happen? And for, no. And as a matter of fact, the point to that is more comfort to those who had lost uh, uh, loved ones who thought, uh, what's going to happen to them? So, uh, so after a while, that discussion stopped because... <coughs> Could you please just watch and then maybe you might see by God's word that, uh, that what we're saying is, is correct. But the fact is, is that when we present um, uh, what the Bible teaches uh, and that uh, um, the uh, tribulation is not God's wrath 
and that some of the things we're going to talk about today, people will look at you like you have three heads. Yeah. I'm telling you, because the, the other, the pre-trib rapture doctrine is that ingrained. But, uh, but there's a, there are so many problems with it, and there's a problem with believing it. Okay? And we're going to get into that. So please turn to Matthew chapter 24. Okay, Matthew chapter 24. Now, we are going to begin with uh, where we pick up where we left off with verse 15, okay? When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place, whoso readeth, let him understand. Then let, him, let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Okay, so who is the abomination of desolation? It's the Antichrist. This is who the Lord is talking about here. This is the Antichrist um, standing in the holy place. Okay? You know, uh, presenting himself as if he were God. The Lord Jesus. <laughs> so verse 17. Let the, him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house. Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. And woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days. But pray ye that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath. For, what is the next word? Amen. Then, for then shall be, what are the next two words? Great, Great tribulation. tribulation. Such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor shall ever be. And except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, who are the elect? Christians, Christians right? Believers. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. Then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not. For there shall arise false Christ and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. I put this in your bulletin. Notice it says, if it were possible. For whatever reason, I don't know if it's because people can't read English or what, People take this to mean that it is possible. Other Bibles leave out the word if. Oh, and other Bibles leave out the word if. That's a great point. Thank you, Adam. So other people leave, uh, other Bibles leave out the word if. That's a huge thing, is it not? You're right. So notice it says, if it were possible, the elect are believers, I put. So the Antichrist will show great signs and wonders, but true believers will not be deceived. We have the Holy Ghost in us, and He speaks to us through God's Word. So first of all, there are a whole bunch of people, believers, who think that we're going to be raptured out before the Antichrist comes around. But they still say, you better watch out for the Antichrist. How does that work? I don't understand. So the Antichrist, you know, comes into power about halfway through the seven-year period. And the Lord is saying that He's going to do such amazing things that if it were possible, even the elect, even believers would be fooled. But believers won't be fooled. Okay? That's, the, that's the point. Okay? So verse 25, Behold, I have told you before, Wherefore, if they shall say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert, go not forth. Behold, he is in the secret chambers, believe it not. For as the lightning cometh out of the east and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For whosoever the carcass is, there will, I mean, I'm sorry, for wheresoever the carcass is, there will the eagles be gathered together. Okay, so now let's make sure that we have our chronology straight. You know, the, the sequence of events here. If the Bible says after, I think the Lord Jesus means 
after. Don't, don't you? That something is coming after. So look at verse 29. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the star shall fall from, he from heaven and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. So let me ask you something. Is the sun going to be darkened before or after the tribulation? After. That's right. After. Is the moon going to not give her light before or after the tribulation? After. After the tribulation. Are the stars going to fall out of the sky before or after the tribulation? After. after. There you go. Okay. Now let's look at the next thing it says. Verse 30. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with, with power and great glory. Now, what happened before all this, before the Lord returned? Tribulation. The tribulation. The tribulation. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. So immediately after the tribulation of those days. What happens immediately after the tribulation of those days? I put this in your bulletin. Yes, it's the rapture. That's what the Bible says. I mean, it doesn't use the word rapture, but that's the, the gathering together, the lifting up it says that trumpet's going to sound and that God's going to gather together His elect. Now I could show you every time in the New Testament the word elect is used, but as I put it in the bulletin and as you correctly said earlier, the elect are those who are saved. The elect are those who are born again. Is an unbelieving Jew a part of the elect? No. Is an unbelieving believing Muslim a part of the elect? No. no. Is an unbelieving Buddhist a part of the elect? No. No one who is unbelieving is a part of the elect. Only those who believe are the elect. Now, could any of those groups believe people? That, of course they could. But as long as they don't believe, they're not a part of the elect. Let me read this to you. Romans chapter 8, verses 31 through 35. What shall we then say of these things to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? So, if God be for us, who can be against? Do you all claim that verse? I, I, can you, do you claim that verse? Amen. Yeah. So, if you claim that verse, what must you be? The elect. Then you must be of the elect, right? Amen. So, no one can tell me that the elect are people who aren't saved. That's just not biblical. 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 1 and 2. First, uh, let me read this to you. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 1 and 2. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to the, the strangers scattered throughout Pontus and Galatia and Cappadocia, Asia and Bithynia, elect according to the foreknowledge of God, uh, of God the Father, through sanctification of the Spirit, unto obedience and the sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ, grace unto you and peace be multiplied. So notice he says elect according to the foreknowledge of God, through sanctification of the Spirit, you know, uh, we're, we're separated, unto obedience. Obeying what? The 
There's only one way to the Father, and what is that? The Son. And so the obedience here is the faith, right? The faith uh, to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what obedience is. And sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. Uh, how are we saved? By the blood of Jesus Christ. By, the, by trusting that. That is our payment for our sins. Okay? So those are the elect. Colossians 3 uh, verses 12 and 13 says this. Put on therefore as the elect of God, holy and, and beloved, uh, uh, vows of mercy, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering. So who was Paul writing to? The Colossians. The, the church, the Colossian church, right? That was made up of, of who? Believers. And he says, therefore, put on therefore as the elect of God. Forbearing one another and forgiving one another, if any man have any quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you also, so also do ye. Okay, then here's the one. And you might jot this one down if you have a pen. Romans, uh, you don't have, just, just the, uh, the uh, chapter and verse. Romans chapter 11, verse 7. Actually, I think I might have put it in. What then? Now get a load of this. What then? Israel hath not obtained that which he seeketh for, <coughs> but the election hath obtain, obtained it, and the rest were blinded. So do you see the distinction between Israel and the elect. You see the difference? Okay. Can, pe can uh, uh, people of uh, Israeli descent believe? Yes. 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 But if they don't believe, do they get a pass? No. 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 Does anyone get a pass? No. no. That's the point. So when it says that the Lord comes and, with His angels and gathers up the elect, who is he talking about? Believers. 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 Not, well, just believers. Okay. All right, so back to Matthew 24 then. It says the Lord will gather his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. So what does he do? He gets us out of here, uh, out of the way, uh, so that then he will pour out his wrath. So now look at verse 32. Now learn a parable of the fig tree. When his branch is yet tender and putteth forth leaves, ye know that summer is nigh or near. So likewise ye, when ye shall see all these things. What are all these things he's talking about? All the things we mentioned, right? Uh, uh, Antichrist getting on the scene and then the wars and the pestilence and the disease and, and all the, and the tribulation. Know that it is near, even at the door. Doors. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. But of that day and hour knoweth no man. No, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. Okay, so what does this say? We, we don't know. We don't know the day, the hour, the minute the Lord you know, the, the sky opens over the sea and, you know, well, as we did see, and the, the, you know, the Lord returns and, and uh, you know, gathers us and all that. We don't know that. But what do we know? Let me ask you something. Yes. Could it happen five minutes from now? Yes. No. 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 Because what has to happen first? All of these things, you see? So this whole doctrine of, you better watch, it could happen in the next two minutes, that isn't what my Bible says. That isn't what my Bible says. I know it's wishful thinking. Because who wants their head cut off? Raise your hand if you want your head cut off. Right? Right? So of course it's wishful thinking. It's very appealing doctrine. But I don't see how it's biblical. Um... Verse 37, But as the day of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered into the ark, 
and knew not until the flood came and took them all away, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Then shall two be in the field, the one shall be taken and the other left. Two women shall be grinding at the mill, the one shall be taken and the other left. Watch therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord doth come. So if that's all the Lord had said, those very last couple of uh, verses concerning his return, then you might think, well, he come at any time, right? But it's everything before it that tells us these things are going to happen first. This is the rapture. So these verses tell us that there's going to be a situation where some people are going, the believers are going to be lifted up, others are not. You know, it could be people standing next to each other, that kind of thing. One's going to be left, one's going to be cut up. Now, you might be wondering, well, Aldo, are you teaching me that at the end of the seven years is when the tribulation is, when the rapture is going to occur? No. Because the first thing I did was explain to you that the tribulation does not last seven years. That is something that we often hear because that's, you know, in, in the movies, left behind, and this and that. So, you know, people are just like parrots, seven-year tribulation, seven tribulation. But it's not that, and I'll prove it to you. Please turn to Revelation chapter 3. Mark your, where you are now, <coughs> because we're going to return to uh, Matthew 24. But please turn to Revelation 13, if you would. Revelation chapter 13. <clears throat> Something that I heard um, a, a preacher say recently, uh, emphasize, and I think it was very good, is that... Um, Many people believe that the, uh, that revela revelation is not in chronological order, uh, and that's just not true. You know, they say it's not in chronological order. It just kind of skips around. It's hard to follow because it skips around. Now, let me ask you something. Why would God write a book of the Bible that was hard to follow so that you really couldn't? Uh, what's the point of it being in there? So that we can understand it, learn it, and live by it, right? God wants us to understand it. But you might say, but well, wait a minute. In Revelation 12, the Lord Jesus is born. So how can it be chronological? Well, it's simple. It's very easy. All you have to do is cut the book of Revelation in half, right down the middle. If you cut, if, so um, between uh, chapter 11 and 12, so from uh, chapter 1 to chapter 11, and then it starts over again, a chapter um, 12 to chapter 22. They're in chronological order. It's easy. So if you put them side by side with Matthew 24, you'll see it lines up. If you put it side by side with Mark 13, you see it lines up. If you put it side by side with Luke 21, you see it's the same order. And why is it all consistent and in the same order? Because there is one author God. He just threw different people to put it down. So, what did we talk about last week and a little bit at the beginning of this week? The Antichrist comes on the scene. There are wars, there's famine, there's disease, then there's persecution of God's people. It all lines up. So then in uh, Revelation chapter 13, remember this is the, the part of the second half of of Revelation, where the chronology starts over. Look at verse 1, Revelation 13. And I stood upon the, sea, the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns. This is the Antichrist. Okay? This is the Antichrist. And upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. And the, beach with, the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion, and the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. The dragon is the false prophet. 
And I saw one of his heads, as it were, wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wondered after the beast. And they worshipped the dragon which gave power unto the beast, and they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies, and power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. Forty and two months. So I put this in your bulletin. So how long is the Antichrist or the beast in power? Forty-two months. Not seven years. Forty-two months. And 42 months is three and a half years. Okay. So the Antichrist is in power for three and a half years. Okay, everyone with me so far? Okay. All right. So, now is this me saying this, or is this God's Word saying it? God's Word. Verse 6, And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name, and his tabernacle, and them that dwell in heaven. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints, and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds, and tongues, and nations. And so this is the Antichrist ruling the world. So he's going to rule for three and a half years, 42 months, against all kindreds, and tongues, and nations, this is the Antichrist powered by Satan. Okay? So, verse 8. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him. Okay, now notice. And all, A-L-L, -L, that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, whose names are, what's the next word? Not. Not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of of the world. So I put this in your bulletin. Now the Bible says here that every single person on the earth who is not a born again Christian is going to be worshiping him. So who, uh, what, when we are, are born again, when we believe on the Lord Jesus, we say, yes, Jesus, I believe you are the Christ, the Son of God. I trust completely what you did on the cross for me. And I trust myself not at all for my salvation. At that moment, the Holy Ghost enters us, we are sealed with the Holy Ghost, and our name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Period. So notice it says, who's the, so who are the ones who are going to be worshiping the, the Antichrist? Those whose names are not written. So in other words, those who are not believers. Verse 11, And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he, he spake as a dragon. This is the false prophet. Now let, let's skip down to verse 15. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak, and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. So let me ask you something. Is there anyone on the planet at that time who is not worshiping the beast, who is not worshiping the Antichrist? Yes. Right? Isn't it? But notice what it says here. So just a minute ago it said, everyone except who? Except those whose name is written in the Lamb Book of Life, right? right? Who are believers. And so notice what it says. It caused as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. So what does that tell you? There are believers on this planet, right? And um, and they they will be they will be killed for not believing. So look at this, verse 16. And he causeth all both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or on their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell save that he had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, 
for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred three score and six. So what is his number? Six, 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 or six hundred and sixty-six. So here is the Antichrist who is commanding everyone to receive this mark, either on the right hand or the forehead, and if not, they, they can't buy anything, sell anything, and, and they'll be killed. So I put this in your bulletin. So here we have a man, the Antichrist, who is put into power by Satan, who accepts worship, who says, I am Christ, who causes everybody to receive a mark, but if you are born again, if you are saved, then you are not receiving the mark. The people who are unsaved are the ones who receive the mark. And once you, if a person receives the mark, that is it. They are finished. There's no, just kidding. So, how long is the Great Tribulation? Three and a half years. The Bible says that during that time, the Antichrist will be chopping people's heads off, people who refuse to worship him. Because they won't take the mark of the beast. He's persecuting believers who don't worship him. They can't buy or sell anything without the mark. And they're fleeing, right? Like the Lord said to. Take off. Get into the mountains. You know, flee this danger. Okay? All right, you with me so far? Now please turn to Revelation chapter 6. Revelation chapter 6. Now, last week we saw the first four seals lining up, uh, matching up with Matthew 24, right? Remember that? Mm -hmm. We saw the fifth seal, the, the, um, uh, the saints being martyred, uh, matched up with um, Matthew 24, the persecution, the tribulation. Now, let's look at uh, Revelation 6, verses uh, 12 and 13. And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal... And lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became at black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood, and the stars of heaven fell unto the earth, even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs when she is shaken of a mighty wind. Okay, now please keep your finger there and go back to Matthew 24. All right, you there? Now look at verse 32. Now learn a parable of the fig tree. When its branch is yet tender and put forth leaves, ye know that summer is nigh. So likewise ye, when ye shall see all these things, know that it is near even at the doors. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. Okay? So back to Revelation 6 then. Look at 13 again. And the stars of heaven fell unto the earth, even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs when she is shaken of a mighty wind. This, am I the only one that's amazed by this? No one can tell me that this isn't chronological. Or really that it's that hard to understand if we just take the time to, to understand it. Right? Just take the time to read it and understand it. It, it matches up. You know, one, two, three, four, five, six. It all lines up. So now look at verse 14 in Revelation 6. And the heaven departed as a scroll when it rolled together, and every mountain and island were removed out of their places. Okay, now get a load of this. And the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, and every bondman, and every free man, hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains, and said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us, and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne, 
and from the wrath of the Lamb. Okay. <clears throat> now, can they see the face of the Lord Jesus in this verse? Yes, right? They can see Him. They're saying, we want to get under something. You know, these are people who aren't believers, right? We want, we want to get, hey, mountains, could you fall on us so we don't have to see the Lord Jesus there sitting on His throne? They can't bear to look at Him. Now, please back to Matthew 24. Verse 29. Again, immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light. The stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of heaven shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds and from one end of heaven to the other. It's the same event. It's the same thing going on here. So here we have Jesus being seen in heaven. Okay? All right, now let's go to Revelation 7. Okay, so you're at 6 there. Okay. Verse 1, And after these things I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living, of living God, and he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, saying, but now notice, saying, hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of God, of our God, in their foreheads. So let me ask you something. Has the, the have the trees or the earth been hurt yet? No. Right? Not yet. They're getting ready to, but not yet. Has God poured out His wrath on anyone at this point? No. <coughs> it was the Antichrist doing these things, all these persecutions. The famines and the wars were caused by the Antichrist. It's His tribulation upon us. When the first seal was opened, He went forth to conquer. What was the next stage? War. And then what did war cause? Famine. And then what did famine cause? Disease. It was all inflicted by the Antichrist and the false prophet who gave him authority. So notice, so far, there is no mention of God pouring out His wrath on anyone, not yet. Okay? So I put this in your bulletin. So is the tribulation pouring out His, uh, God pouring out His wrath on anyone? No. The tribulation is God's people being persecuted for what they believe. Okay? All right, now let's pick back up. Verse 4. We're going to do a little reading here. And I heard the number of them which were sealed, and they were sealed at 144,000 of all the tribes of the children of Israel. So 144,000. <coughs> of the tribe of Judah were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Reuben were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Gad were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Asher, 12,000. Of the tribe of Nephilim, uh, 12,000. Of the tribe of Manassas were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Simeon were sealed uh, 12,000. Of the tribe of Levi were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Issachar were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Zebulun were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Joseph were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Benjamin were sealed 12,000. After this I beheld and lo, a great multitude which no man could number of, what's the next word? Oh. All nations and kindreds and people and tongues stood before the throne and before the Lamb clothed with white robes and palms in their hands and crowd cried with a loud voice saying, Salvation to our God which sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb. And all the angels stood round about the throne and about the elders and the four beasts and fell before the throne of their faces and worshipped God, worshiped God, 
saying, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto our God forever and ever. Amen. And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, What are these which are arrayed in white robes? And whence came they? And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said to me, These are they which came out of great tribulation. Great tribulation. And have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore are they before the throne of God and have served him day and night in his temple. And he sitteth on the throne that shall dwell among them. Oh, I'm sorry. He that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them. They shall hunger no more, and neither thirst any more, neither shall the sun light on them, nor any heat. For the Lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them, and shall lead them in unto living fountains of waters. And God shall wipe away all the tears from their eyes. Amen. Okay, so let's review this quickly, okay? The end times begin with a seven-year period. The first three and a half years um, are what Matthew 28, 8, um, no, I'm sorry, 24, 8, refers to as the beginning of sorrows, okay? It's the beginning of sorrows, and it's reflected by what? Number one, the Antichrist comes on the scene. Number two, wars. Number three and four, um, famines and pestilences and diseases. Number five, tribulation against the saints of God. And that occurs for, the, the great tribulation occurs for the second three and a half years. There will be great persecution through the Antichrist and his regime. Then there will be a great earthquake. The sun and moon will turn to darkness. The, sun, the stars will fall out of the sky. Everyone looked up and saw the heavens and the scroll, to, uh, you know, the, 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 opened up like a scroll. They saw the face of Jesus and the unsaved said, we can't bear you. We, we, we want the mountains to fall on us so that we can't see Him. Then the wrath of God will not be poured out until the 144,000 are sealed. And then we have this great rapture. This, this lifting away. And you notice, it's not just 144. What did it say? Of all nations and people and kindreds and all, all going to be there, which includes, guess who? Us, right? Even with palms. Praise you, God. Praise you for salvation. Praise the Lord. So I put this in your bulletin. We don't know the exact hour, or day, day or hour, that the Lord returns and removes His believers from the earth, but we know, do know that all of these things happen first. First. Then the Bible tells us that God will pour out His wrath on the, the um, unbelievers, you know, on the earth, um, all those who took the mark of the beast, and we'll finish up, you know, uh, Matthew 24 by God's grace next. Okay, so let me let me finish by saying this for for this week. Knowledge of these verses, knowledge of anything really, uh, uh, of of um, uh, the contents of Matthew 24 or of Revelation, um, is needed for salvation. You don't need to know any of that to get saved. There are brothers and sisters in Christ who believe in a pre-trib rapture. Uh, there, there are those who um, uh, believe in what they call mid-trib and pre-wrath and post-trib and, and all of that. <coughs> but it does not mean they're not saved. I, what I do think it means is either they are not reading their Bible or they're reading it through the lens of their, um, their, their study Bible notes at the bottom. 
or their Schofield Bible notes at the bottom that says, well, when you see this, it really doesn't mean this, it means that. Okay? Or through the lens of teaching by guys like David Jeremiah, uh, who tells you, as uh, Jim and I were talking about, who tells you, prepare for this, prepare for that, but what's there to prepare for if you just lift it up and don't, and don't have to suffer anything? What are you preparing for? I don't get it. You know, you want to make sure your life insurance is paid up? I don't know. Right? I, I don't understand. Uh, or John MacArthur or others like that. But please understand, I don't have an agenda. I don't care when the Lord returns. Uh, it doesn't personally matter to me, like, uh, it's got to be here or got to be there. But as I put in your bulletin, I am convinced that the Great Tribulation <coughs> and God's wrath are two different things. I am convinced that the Tribulation is from Satan, not from God. I am convinced that believers will suffer Tribulation. I am convinced that, that rapture occurs after the Tribulation. And that we, praise God, will not suffer God's wrath. And the, the Bible convinced me of that. Okay? Yeah. I see the correct what I said earlier. Oh. It's not that they read out the word if. The King James says if it were possible, the yeah. other just say if possible. So it leaves room for doubt, right? Oh, if possible. Like back yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. That's right. Sorry. No, sure, sure. <laughs> yeah, so if possible makes it sound like that it could be. Yeah, I but if it were possible, <laughs> means it's not. Yeah. You know. Sorry about that. Yeah, oh no, no. Thanks. Thanks for a clarification. You know, it'd be like me saying, if it were possible, uh, I could uh, fly home by flapping my arms, right? You know, but obviously, it's not. That's the point. Okay? Um, and so. But, but what do we know? We know this, that if you're not saved, you're on the wrong side, right? If you're not saved, um, look, I, some of you, maybe most of you saw what I posted uh, yesterday about my 20th anniversary, my, my uh, bypass surgery. I could have died at any moment. You know, I, I mean, it was unbelievable to me. It, it, how I didn't just die in a hotel, something because I traveled a lot during that time, in a hotel room in Montana or somewhere, I don't know. Except that God kept me alive for whatever reason. And um, because a whole lot of other younger guys die, right? They have families and, and all these things. And it wasn't anything special, he just did for whatever his purposes were. But so, so the point is, is that uh, you know, we might say, well, okay, it sounds like I have some time to get saved and all that, you know, before, uh, but you could die today, right? Um, and so, uh, so therefore, you know, if anyone doesn't know for sure that when you die, going to heaven, be sure to talk with me. Talk with Aldo, I know that would be happy to talk with you, so you can know for sure. Um, and then, then the, really, to wrap this up, it's just a matter of preparation. You know, we need to be prepared. We need to be together, like I said last week. We need to help each other out. Uh, we need to be ready because it's going to get worse. You're right. And it's going to get worse. And, uh, um, and uh, it's going to get really bad. And, uh, but the Lord promised to never leave us nor forsake us. And we know that, you know, all right, so we're persecuted for our faith, we get killed. What happens the very moment we die as believers? Absent from the body and present with the Lord. Amen. So, so we're good. We're good. Okay. All right, so in the meantime, let's lead folks to Christ. We don't want them to be on the, on the wrong side of the soul. All right, let's pray. Father, we, we are so thankful for your word. Uh, we're so thankful for... Um, uh, they, 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 the disciples just asked, uh, how can we know when you're coming? You know, how, are there signs? And, and you told them. And you're telling us. And we're so grateful for it. Lord, help us, indeed, to share the gospel. Help us um, to lead lost souls. To, to believing on your son 
um, trusting that him with their salvation um, so that if, if they die before um, all these events occur, they're with you. If uh, uh, they go through all these, if, if they're still around when all these things occur, um, they won't take that mark and a rare one might die for it, but then they'll be with you. Uh, and Lord, help us to prepare. Help us to be ready. Uh, and help us to uh, uh, serve you. In our Lord Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.